When I was a kid growing up, my parents were incredibly neglectful. One cold, frosty winter's day, I finally built up the courage to ask my mum for a PlayStation, and she said, no, you already have an Xbox. Literal child abuse. Now as an adult, I'm playing all these PlayStation games for the first time, and they're amazing. Naughty Dog is quickly becoming one of my favourite developers, and Uncharted 4 is pretty sick. It's like you're playing a movie. A movie with a lot of climbing. You start off as little Nathan in an orphanage. I proceed to walk on the other kids' pillows. They all went on a field trip, but Nathan had to stay back and miss out, which is almost as awful as everyone's dead parents. Nathan wants to sneak out of the orphanage and meet his brother, but a nun and a priest block his path. I overhear them talking about me, and the priest doesn't even say I look cute. You turn 11, and suddenly it's like you don't exist. I sneak past the nun and onto the rooftops. Remember as a child how you could climb up vertical walls with ease? I meet my brother, and he's a really cool guy. He's into planking, which is so sick. This game has so many cool moments. Like here I attempt to jump a wide gap, but my character chickens out and I have to get ready to attempt the jump again. My brother Sam shouts encouragement, it's wholesome, but also dangerous. Orphans are stupid. I then proceed to throw some rope around a power pole and just casually swing across an entire street. Little man is giving Spider-Man a run for his money. It's a nice bonding moment, but then the camera fades and suddenly we're in a South American prison many years later. We're fighting some guy who I'm guessing is in a gang, although that is pretty judgmental of me. He could just be tanned. I beat him badly and get taken by the guards. The gang of the guy I fought, or maybe they're just his best friends forever, aren't happy with what just happened. They tell me they want to kill me, it's really unwelcoming. They take me deep inside the prison and we pass several inmates being badly beaten. Surprisingly white inmates, but good on them for not seeing colour. Welcome to War Thunder, a game where you fight in the skies, on the seas and on the ground. You'll be fighting in more places than my parents did right before the divorce. Currently I'm on the ground and I take my M2 medium tank straight to the river so I can surround myself with God's precious nectar. Any tank is an amphibious tank when you're a big boy. This outside the box strategy works incredibly well as I dust off half the enemy team. You can also use this exact same strategy with a plane. Alright, maybe not a plane, but naval combat will have you feeling wetter than water. The War Thunder campaigns are what I enjoy most and will take you to historical battles like Pearl Harbor. Here I have to stop the Japanese bombers before it's too late. If they manage to bomb Pearl Harbor, the American military will be crippled for 15 minutes. I enjoy the in-depth vehicle customization. Kitting out your tanks exactly how you want will have you wishing you were born in the early 1900s so you could have served in a real tank crew. Okay, probably not, but you can play it now. This month, War Thunder will have a special in-game event with combat robots from Atomic Heart. Unlock uniquely themed prizes, decorations, icons, and in-game bonuses. War Thunder is free on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Use my link to download the game and get exclusive premium vehicles, boosters, and more. See you on the battlefield, and thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. A plot twist, we know the prison warden, and he snuck us in here so we can find some treasure hidden in that tower. The only way to get to that tower is to climb. Luckily, Nathan's climbing abilities are only growing stronger with every mission. This guy makes the Navy SEALs look like the Navy crabs. He could physically climb his way out of poverty. Look at how he effortlessly pulls his entire body weight up. This man's finger muscles are going to make an NPC woman very happy one day. I reach the cell and look behind a stone to find a gold cross. What Nathan really needed to find was a cuticle care kit, Jesus Christ. Now outside the prison walls, I need to break back in, which I do via a cutscene. I tell my brother and our friends about the cross. We decide to talk somewhere more private. I guess the excitement of finding the cross made us forget that the entire Latin demographic of the prison wanted us dead, and we get jumped. We probably shouldn't have gone to a scary, dark, secluded place, silly goose. The good news is, we're all basically prime Mike Tyson. The prison goes into a full-blown riot, and the lads and I realise it's time to escape. I've run from the cops once in my life. So there's this takeaway place in Australia called Red Rooster, and when we were kids, we used to steal the neon letter S so that it said Red Rooter. Rooter meaning sex in Australia. A classic timeless, and dare I say intellectually stimulating gag. This one time we see police lights in the distance and I start driving off, but they get to us fast and four police cars pull me over and surround the vehicle. It was bloody intense. We end up having to lean up against the police car as we get frisked for weapons. It turns out some crew was doing actual home invasions nearby and they thought we were them, but we were just kids trying to bring a smile to the local population by our intelligent wordplay. Like the video so I can live in your recommended section rent free. Anyway, my brother dies, but at least my character is used to the loss of loved ones. I escape with our friend by taking a boat from the jetty. Just kidding, obviously we slide down a rocky surface and leap a 70 foot gap to a boat below because it has to be extra. Fast forward many years and now we're a scuba diver. Nothing like looking at little fish to get over the loss of your entire immediate family. I'm working as part of a salvage crew now. My job is hooking up the crane to the container. You have to swim the ropes through the gaps, it's oddly satisfying for some reason. We pull the cargo container out and it becomes apparent that we're in a river. 
A bro went from finding ancient gold crosses in old ruins to potentially contracting gastroenteritis from accidentally drinking river water. Your brother died, not your ambition. This guy hoses off my equipment for me for a long time. I haven't seen this much water wasted since I stopped taking showers with my mate Mato. What did we find in the shipping container? Copper wire. This gives me PTSD as Australia still uses this stuff for our internet lines. I'm surprised we're not communicating with each other via smoke signals down here. Honestly, the Aussie broadband network is more unstable than people who dye their hair blue. Now Nathan's just in his attic doing normal man things and definitely not having an existential crisis. Playing with a nerf gun against imaginary opponents is just as good as antidepressants. I head downstairs where my wife is working away and she asks me to get dinner ready. Instead, I grab a beer from the fridge and drink it in front of her as an open defiance. She doesn't even acknowledge my presence. This marriage is as dead as Nathan's family. We have some food and then I play Crash Bandicoot for a while, which is cool. Then we make sweet hate love to each other and then my brother Sam shows up and he's still alive. And pretty shocking news. He's been in that prison all these years while we've been diving in rivers. Probably should have double checked on him. We talk and he tells me how he managed to escape. Sam made friends with a cartel leader in prison and joined in on his escape plan. I don't know if any of you guys do this, but when you're really bored, do you ever imagine what would happen if like, for example, a crazy gunman started shooting everyone? I then imagine what I would do in that scenario. Like I'd hide behind a corner with my car key and stab him in the eye, saving the day. The town would then go on to host a tasteful annual parade in my honor. In reality, I'd get shot almost immediately, but recently I've been thinking about how I would escape a prison. Firstly, I'd befriend the guards and gain their trust by regularly telling them what my fellow inmates were up to. Snitching for Jesus. Once I was close to the guards, I'd say, hey, you there, let me out. And they'd be like, all right, man, chilling. And then they'd drive me home and throw an annual parade in my honor. The escape goes great, but the gold cross we found in the tower was a fake. The real one is being held in that mansion. It's a clue to finding the real treasure and it's currently being auctioned off at this billionaire's party and we plan to sneak inside and steal it. How do we plan on doing that? Climbing. The mansion security forgot that Spider-Man might show up. My favorite part of climbing with Sam is hearing his highly emotional reactions when I die. We find our way onto the mansion grounds and sneak inside the building. As I mentioned, we're here to steal the real cross before it gets sold. It's pretty disgusting that people are trying to profit off Christianity. First every church ever and now these guys. We make our way into the cellars. There's tinned fruit absolutely everywhere, like an excessive amount of tinned fruit. Imagine dropping $100 million on an ancient artifact at this auction and then being served canned pineapple. I find the electrical box that will take out the lights, but it's behind a barred door. I have to find a tool to open the door by rummaging through containers. Naughty Dog is able to turn the most mundane tasks into something satisfying and enjoyable. Kind of like when you turn the lights off during sex and pretend you're making love to one of the boys, I mean the lights go off which is scary and we steal the precious cross. We now have to sneak out of the mansion grounds. Fortunately, the gardeners didn't mow the lawns lately and the guards love walking in the long grass. Little ratatats. I climb through an open window and I'm suddenly face to face with one of our rival treasure hunting gang leaders. All I have to do is fight her. If I lose, I lose. And if I beat a black woman, I risk being canceled by children who play Minecraft. Fortunately, she absolutely destroys me so my YouTube channel can live on for at least another six months or so. She proceeds to throw me out a window, which is very aggressive, but she obviously isn't aware that I'm freakishly strong and nimble. A gunfire starts and it sounds like Sam needs my help. I see a piece of wire, but there's no flying fox and my character just uses his handgun. This is why guns should be legal everywhere, just in case you need to take a zip line somewhere. A huge shootout unravels as we go from cute little hobby climbers to serial killers. It's all good though, we're treasure hunting, so it's fun and silly. We narrowly escape with the gold cross and the writing on it leads us to an old church in Scotland. The land of bagpipes, kilts and no underwear. I think it's mostly the men who don't wear underwear, so let's just hope they like climbing as much as we do. We reach some old ruins and it seems our rival treasure hunting team is already here searching. This means I'm likely to get beaten by that woman again. Usually I have to pay for that sort of stuff, so we're chilling. I notice some beer bottles laying around, which means the other treasure team has a great work culture. Good on them. My crew never enjoys a drink together, we're always just climbing. A large portion of this game is climbing, but I actually really enjoy it. This might sound strange, but it reminds me of Banjo-Kazooie or other platformers of that time period. It's just now modern with insane graphics, but the way you have to figure out the right path is very nostalgic. I also appreciate the way this game is linear in the same way The Last of Us is. Not everything has to always be open world. It works great for Grand Theft Auto, but having each mission set in a different location and often country means the story can progress in cool ways. 
After killing 50 men or so, we reach an old cemetery. My character starts drawing in his journal. Nothing like sketching a highly detailed picture in 4 seconds to cleanse your mind of the fact that you just slaughtered a bunch of men who likely all had young families. This drawing has cross hatching and shading. Why is he hunting treasure? This man should be an artist. I actually had my first ghost experience with my mate the other day. We were looking for Swagger Cell's cat because it escaped and we were assigned to searching the cemetery. I was just reading the tombstone, soaking it up respectfully. Then we see this one grave that was an entire small building, a little church or a mausoleum. These guys were flexing on the entire graveyard. I had to have a look. So I go up close and on a gold plated plaque it said, The Miller Family Tomb. There was this wooden door and I opened it up a little bit and then shit got weird. It went deathly silent, all the car noises stopped and then this freezing breeze swept up under my friend Dork and me. I felt chills go up my body and so did my mate. I swear I also saw something or someone inside the tomb. I know shit apologized out loud to the Miller family. I get home that night shook. My girlfriend wants to watch a comedy movie and I'm thinking great this will take my mind off the dead. She loads it up and it's where the fucking Millers. You tell me ghosts aren't real. The puzzle shows us our next clue is over by the church. We jog over. Just kidding, we obviously climb ridiculously steep cliff faces. I realize that I can cling onto Nathan's back like a baby monkey. I don't know why this amused me so much. We reach the final tomb and pass the last test. It then shows us a large map of Madagascar and so we head there. We now have a jeep and everything. This is halfway through the game, but I'd be down to make a part 2 if you guys are keen. Uncharted is great for content, just let me know in the comments or like the video or something. I also uploaded to my Papa Pelly channel. We have a few Hell down yeah. um, yeah. gang members here. Right, so yes. Out. Just because they're African American, they're gang members, huh? No, they're in the cribs. Okay, okay. Yeah, criminals, criminals, what a waste of space. Living life in a constant rat race. Oh, no, we needed someone to step sure. up and you stepped up and that takes a lot of fucking balls. And you went up there and you yep. arguably won the battle, you know? You got split decision, so that's pretty good effort. Look, I'll take arguably any day of the week. <laughs> yep. It's kind of like consent. Uh, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> Thanks for all the support on both my channels. It means a lot. I love you. War Thunder is free on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Use my link to download the game and get exclusive premium vehicles, boosters, and more. See you on the battlefield, and thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video.